Hey, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about RMA modeling and its three main components that are the PD and Q values. RMA is a time forecasting technique and it stands for auto regressive integrated moving average. So basically, it's a combination of three models the AR model, the I model, and the MA model. The first component is AR, which stands for auto regressive. Uh, it basically means that the current value in the time series depends upon the previous values. The second component is the MA model, it stands for moving average. So it basically means that the current value depends upon the average of the previous values in the time series. The last component is the I component, which stands for integrated, which basically means how many times you need to differentiate your time series to make it stationary. Because if you are using the RMA model, your time series need to be stationary and there should not be any seasonality present. And if the seasonality is present, you need to differentiate it one time or twice to make it stationary. Your time series is going to be stationary if the mean variance and the autocorrelation of that particular time series is going to be constant over time. Now let's talk about three parameters of RMA, the P, D and Q values. P stands for number of autoregressive terms in a model. Autoregressive terms refer to the number of lagged values of the time series that are used to predict the current value. For example, if P is equal to 2, then the model uses two previous values to predict the current value. Q stands for number of moving average terms in a model. Moving average terms refer to the error terms of the model that are lagged. For example, if Q is equal to 1, then the model uses the error term from the previous time step to predict the current value. And finally, D stands for degree of differencing. So the number of time you need to difference your time series to make it stationary. If the series is already stationary, then D is equal to 0. If not, then we need to difference it until it becomes stationary. The number of times we need to difference the time series is the degree of differencing. For example, if we need to difference the time series twice to make it stationary, then D will be equal to 2. Now we'll look into how we can get those P, D and Q values for RMA. So for P and Q values, we are going to look at two charts. So first chart is called as ACF chart, is also called as autocorrelation function. And the second chart is the PACF chart, which is partial autocorrelation function chart. An ACF chart shows a correlation between a time series and its lagged values. In other words, it measures how similar a data point is to the ones that came before it. The ACF chart is plotted with the lag on the x-axis and the correlation coefficient on the y-axis. A PACF chart also shows a correlation between time series and its lag values, but it removes the effect of intervening observation. In other words, it measures the correlation between two data points that are separated by a specific number of time intervals after removing the effect of the observations in between. The PACF chart is also plotted with lag on the x-axis and the autocorrelation coefficient on the y-axis. So how do we actually use this chart to determine the values of P and Q in a time series model? If we look at the ACF chart, we can see that the autocorrelation coefficients decay slowly. This suggests that the time series has a high degree of persistence and that we should use a higher value of Q in our model. On the other hand, if we look at the PACF chart, we can see that the autocorrelation coefficient drop off sharply after the first few lags. This suggests that the time series is more volatile and that we should use a lower value of P in our model. It's important to note that only ACF and PACF charts can be insufficient to find out the optimal values of P, D, and Q. Uh, here are the few reasons for it. Firstly, the charts can be difficult to interpret, especially for the beginners. It can be challenging to identify the appropriate number of flags to include in the model of from the charts. Secondly, the charts can be ambiguous and lead to multiple interpretations. The pattern in the ACF and PACF charts may suggest different values for P, D and Q and it can be challenging to decide which interpretation is the most appropriate. And finally, the charts may not be suitable for non-stationary time series which require differencing to become stationary. In these cases, the ACF and PACF charts may show spurious correlations that do not reflect the two patterns in the data. And again, if you're working on a project, so for example, you're building an RMA model, then it's not always feasible to look at the ACF and PSF charts. So that's why there's something called like AIC, which comes into the play. AIC, also called as IT Information Criterion, is a statistical measure that helps to compare different RMA models and choose the one that best fits the data. AIC is based on two factors. First one is the likelihood of the model, and second, the number of parameters used by the model. AIC penalizes the model which use more parameters, thus encouraging the simpler models which fits the data well. 
In Arima modeling, the AIC is used to select the optimal values of P, D, and Q, which corresponds to the autoregressive integrated and moving average components. The AIC value is calculated for each combination of P, D, and Q, and the combination with the lowest AIC value is chosen as the best fitting model. By selecting the model with the lowest AIC, we ensure that we have the best balance between model complexity and goodness of fit to the data. It is useful metric for evaluating the quality of different Arima models and can help avoid overfitting or underfitting of the model. Now let's see the practical example of an AIC and how you can pick the P, D and Q values. Here is a video where I've already explained how Arima works and how you can select the AIC values. This code is using the intertools model to generate all the possible combinations of values for P, D and Q and then fitting an Arima model for each combination and printing the AIC value of the model. The intertool module is imported to generate all possible combination of PD and Q. Here PD and Q are initialized as ranges from 0 to 4, which are most commonly used. Now for the for loop iterates over each combination of PD and Q. Inside the loop, an Arima model is fit for each combination using DSA Arima function and stats model module. If the model fitting is successful, the AIC value of the model is printed using the model Arima fit attribute if the model fitting fails the continuous statement is used to skip to the next combination of pd and q values overall this code generates all possible combination of pd and q for arima model fits each model for the given time series data and prints the aic value of each model by examining the aic values one can choose the optimal combination of pd and q to be used in the final arima model so you can directly use the AIC for your time series and you can select the least value, the least value of PDQ for your model. So that will be the optimal Arima model. If you want an entire code of an Arima project, I'm leaving the GitHub link in the description. You can go there, you can download the Jupyter file or the .python file, you can run that and you can experiment it with different PD and Q values. Uh, the CSV file is also given so you can check that out too. It's for finding out GDP for the next six years. You can try and experiment with finding out the GDP for the next seven years, eight years. It's up to you. You can experiment that. The link is in the description. The purpose behind this video is to give you a basic understanding about Arima, what PD and Q values are, what is ACF function, what is PACF function and I hope that you understand the basics of these models and how Arima works. If you found this video helpful, then give it a like, give it a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.